This mini lesson is going to look at surface area and volume for a right rectangular pyramid. And as we've seen before, our pyramids are classified according to the shape of their base. So for this lesson, we're going to be looking at shapes. Oops, wrong one. Sorry, we're going to be looking at shapes like this one. Our base is a rectangle. So a couple of things that we've talked about, just want to make sure we know the apex is the top of our pyramid. So if I was looking up here, this is the apex. Our height, our perpendicular height, is this one that drops down to the center of our base. And our slant height is from the apex along the side, and this is on our triangular face. So we need to know that those pieces of information. We know that we're looking at surface area. We're including the base. And when we talk about lateral area, we're not including the base. When we look at the net for a rectangular pyramid, this can help us to look at our surface area. And so this surface area we were saying for our other pyramids is the surface area of our base. And then we just have to find the surface area of the sides. And those triangular faces were all the same. But in the rectangular pyramid, we don't see that. So it's very similar, but really when we go to our net, we can really see it a whole lot more. Here is our base. So we find the surface area of our base. Okay, surface area of the base. And then it says two times the surface area of the triangular end faces, or whatever you want to call them. So that is saying this. This triangle here, the area of it, is the same as the area on this other side, the opposite sides. So I can do two times that surface area. I still have the other triangles. So if I take this triangle, and this triangle, I can find the surface area of those, add those together. So all of those five pieces will make up the surface area for my rectangular pyramid. So when we take the net apart, we look at the net, that's going to help us. Well, let's look at some questions. So, of course, this is dealing with slant height because the slant height is going to give me what is on the faces. And I'm just going to pause here and I'll get back. Okay, so again, I was saying we have our slant height and that's really important when we're looking at our surface area. So let's look at this question. Notice I have two different slant heights. And the reason why I have two different slant heights is because of the rectangular base. So um, when I am looking at my surface area, so here's my surface area, we want the surface area of the base. I'm going to add that to the surface area of the triangle faces on the end. And we're going to add that see if I can get all of that, to the surface area of the triangular faces on the side. So this takes apart our net, right? We have five um, pieces and two of these are doubled. And I guess I forgot to put that in, so we'll just make sure we're multiplying this one by two. And we're multiplying this one by two. So the surface area of our base is seven times four. The surface area of our faces on the end, and for, the, for this case, let's look at our end ones to be here, okay? And then that would be this little triangle in there is the same. So two times, and how do I find the area of a triangle? It's one half, the base, in this case, the base I'm looking at is four, and the height is 10.6. Now the next one I'm looking at is the front triangle that we have here. And then there's the back one that goes with it. It's harder to see when I start drawing everything in. There's the back triangle. They're the same. So that's two times 
1 half, the base in this case is 7, and the height is 10.1. And our units are centimeters, and we know that when we calculate area, we have squared. Because really, if we look at our dimensions here, this is 7 centimeters, 4 centimeters, a centimeter times a centimeter gives me the square centimeter. So when we multiply this out, I get 28. Uh, 21.2 and I get 35.35 we add it all up and we get 84.55 centimeters squared that's the surface area of this rectangular pyramid so it's quite straightforward. It comes right to that net. Well, let's mess it up a little bit. What happens if we only have the perpendicular? And this gets confusing, so we have to be careful. So let's see if we can make this work a little bit. If I'm going to do the front face and the back face, I need to know it's slant height. Those two have the same slant height. I only have the perpendicular height. So if we look at that, to find that, I need this distance and the slant height to it. And that's a little hard to see, but this is really what we're doing. We're getting a right angle triangle in here where this value is 25. And then the question is, what is this value right here? It is half of the 10 that we see. So this value in there is 5. I'll mark it right there. And what I am looking for is the, the hypotenuse. Okay, what is that side? All right, that's a slant height for the larger faced triangles. So, using Pythagorean theorem, c is equal to the square root of 25 squared plus 5 squared. That's the square root of 625, add 25. The square root of 650, and that's going to give me 25.5. So that slant height is 25.5, right here, this one. And we know that the hypotenuse is always going to be a little bit larger, okay, than either of the legs. So now we'll do this in red. We've got our perpendicular coming down here, going this direction to get this slant height. That's a little bit easier to see that triangle. It looks like this. Where this value is 25. What's this value right in here? Well, it has to be half of the 20, so it's 10. And again, we're looking for that slant height off of our triangle, and this is our hypotenuse that we're looking for. So C is equal to the square root of 25 squared plus 10 squared. So 625 plus 100, it's the square root of 725, and the square root of 725 is 26.9. So that tells me the slant height, I put a square there, didn't need to, this value is 26.9, and that goes in right here. So we have not found the surface area yet. All we did was we found the slant heights. Okay, now that I have the slant heights, let's see if we can clear off some of this so it makes it a little bit easier for us to see. Okay, so our slant heights that we're looking at are in green and in red. We want to know the surface area, so this is going to equal the surface area, the base, plus two times the surface area, the ends, 
plus two times the surface area of the sides. So the surface area of our base, base times height, or sorry, length times width, 20 times 10. Surface area of our ends, that's one half. The base and the base on the end here is 10. And that height is 26.9. And then we have, make sure I have some, oops, oops, some room here. Grab that all together. The base we're looking at is 20 when we're looking at the front face. So when I'm looking at this part right here, the front face, I have a base of 20 and I have a height of 25.5. So let's do a little bit of the math and see what we have. We have 200 add, uh, I did these wrong, one. 255, no, sorry, wrong one. This one is 134.5 at 255. Get our surface area is 589.5 square centimeters, or because we are doing area. So a lot more work if our rectangular pyramid, all we have is the height. So we have to find both slant heights first. So let's look at volume. Okay, again, we have this volume is based on the surface area of our base and the height. And this height that we're looking at, this height is our perpendicular height. And so in our diagram, that's giving us at six centimeters. So that makes this a whole lot easier to work with. I'm going to use this as one that we had seen um, yesterday. I'm going to bring it so it's up front. And we were dealing with the square base. So then we could have just our length and width for the same value. And here we have a rectangle. So let's look at volume. Volume is one third, the length, eight, the width, three, the height, six. So our volume is going to give us 48 cubic centimeters. Centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter gives us a cubic measure. So that's easy. If I have the perpendicular height. So that leads me to think, well, what happens if we have slant heights. Now, what's interesting to note is that I have two different slant heights, but they're going to each give me the same perpendicular height. So I don't have to do my work twice. I just have to do it once. So let's look at the easiest one to see, probably is I want this measure to here, which is in the center. I have this slant height, which is nine. I need to know the distance from the center to that end. Well, it's half of the 5.4. So that is going to give me 2.7. So when I see that triangle, what I'm looking for is this side. The hypotenuse is 9. So we are looking at uh, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So 9 squared is equal to 2.7 squared plus b squared. 9 squared minus 2.7 squared is equal to b squared. And we're going to take the square root of both sides. That's going to give me b. So this is 81 minus, of course, this is the one I didn't do out. I just did it in the calculator. So 2.7 squared, which is 7.29.
So 81 subtract 7.29 gives me 73.71. And when we take the square root of that value, we get 8.6. If I do it for the other face and I use the 8.7 as the hypotenuse, I would have my base being 1.4 and I get 8.6, which makes sense because it's the same pyramid. So its height is going to be the same regardless. So here now my perpendicular height is 8.6. This value in here is going to be 8.6 meters. Now let's calculate the volume. It's one third length times width times height. One third, 5.4 times 2.8 times 8.6. And when we calculate this volume, we get 43.3 cubic meters. And that's the volume. So in each of these pyramids that we've been looking at, if I have the slant height, I can do surface area. If I have perpendicular height, I can do volume. But if I'm given the perpendicular height only and I'm asked to find the surface area, I need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the slant height. If I am given the slant height, and I'm asked to find the volume, I will have to find the perpendicular height. So there's more work involved in those questions. Please check your Students Achieve. Um, the web page there has the questions that will fit this information. And stay tuned for the next lesson, which will be a right cone.